you're a runner and welcome to FM Tahiti. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, uh, you know, as is tradition. Uh, so I, I managed to get a bit ahead of myself in the recording schedule, which is good because work's been a bit busy. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a match for you today. We're going to go through the transfers from um, summer. Cause we've had the kind of summer break, a uh, bit of an update on what's going on, and then we'll play our opening match. I've got us at the very start start screen. You can see Rodrigo there in his uh, Row 2 blue um, shirt. Actually, I'm going to have to change his appearance. I? That's the wrong team colour. He's been wearing it for a while now. Um, I'll change that in a second. Uh, but the reason why I've got the screen up is you might notice along the back here, we've got different shirts. So when you've got a 3D kit selected, the 3D kit shows up in the changing room here. So you might notice it if you've been playing with licensed teams, like a licensed premiership or championship or league team, you might find that you've got their actual kit in the background in this. And then in the actual match engine, they'll have their actual kind of kit rather than one of the sort of football manager presets. Uh, what I managed to do was um, I managed to edit just as a test the uh, wings kit. Uh, it's not quite how the 2D kit looks, um, because let's say, play around with it a little bit, but it's it looks all right to me. It's um, it, when you actually play in the match, you'll see when we play if we've got our uh, home kit on. It's not easy to kind of actually see the details on that because even with a 3D engine sort of a 3D match, I should say zoomed all the way in, it's actually quite difficult to see that but I, was, I quite like this so my plan is now that i know how to do this there was a really good article on fm scout about it i think um it's a really good article by michael uh, murray in the forums and there's some templates you can download as well now that i kind of i'm okay and happy with doing it i'm going to do this for all of the teams for next fm they're all going to get a 3d kit right from the start um i'm going to spend a bit of time doing that in between games. Let's load this up. So we've got our kit, that's one of the things I've been doing. Um been playing around with logos and things like that. Obviously I've got my new new badge for my kind of branding or whatever you want to call it for FM Tahiti. But I'll I'll make bigger changes for FM20. But here we are, we've got our very first match coming up which is going to be against Mount T. So Mount T got promoted and they're their kind of yo-yo team going up and down between the championship and the premiership. Uh, we've had a reasonable kind of off-season. Uh, we've only really played three, no sorry, yeah, three real teams, Mangrave, Vines, and Gem Apps. Uh, but these are all lower league or non-league as far as we're concerned. So, I don't know, right, we managed to somehow lose to our own um, under-23s and draw against our own under-23s. So it's not a fantastic running, but it's it's okay. And around about this time here is also when players went away on international duty. In terms of things like the uh, stadium situation, we're still searching. Still searching for somewhere to put a 5,374 seater. The fact that we've still not found somewhere to put it, I think means to me that we've got at least a season and a half, two seasons before we'll see this built. So we've got a while until we, we get any kind of benefit out of that. Until then, we've got this uh, 807 seater. Um, our original stadium to work with and I don't think when we start building this that we'll end up being relocated just because we're looking for a, a site if we were just rebuilding this then maybe but it looks like we're going to be going elsewhere um, in reality it's not a huge island <laughs> it is basically just an airstrip um, on like a two kilometre long island or something like that near Mangareva it's, it's not you know, overburdened with sites. Either it's the middle of the island, one end or the other end. It's, yeah, it, doesn't, it shouldn't take them that long to find it, but obviously the FM doesn't know this. Let's have a look at our transfers then, because we did make some movement. I'm going to show you the transfers as well for the league in general, because it's been quite interesting in comparison to some years. So let's look at the outs. First of all, Brandon Charpentier has gone. He was unhappy that he wasn't getting the first team football. I had enough options. I didn't really need him around. He's never been like if you look at his attributes, he's he's okay for for our league. Re just remember, bear in mind this is our kind of league and standard. He started playing with us when we were in the under twenty three gold league, so not even the full senior league. So he's he's okay for that. 
but he's like four clean sheets in that full season he played. Didn't really play much last season. Um, and now he's gone off to uh, play for Mahisha. No money, but we got him off the wage budget. We got, he was about on £200, uh, so we got rid of him. I'm also going to show you the released players. So Nick Higgins went, he was on 550, and although he's rated as being you know, high potential, he only played a few games, didn't do particularly well, and again, 550 wasn't... I couldn't afford to keep him on for that if he was only going to be a bit part. So I just kind of bit the bullet and let him go for that. Uh, William Nagatoka, I can't remember, I think he's on a couple of hundred tops. Uh, but he didn't play much when he did play, he wasn't fantastic. He's not particularly highly rated, so away he goes. Laurent Mernier, I wanted to try and sign him just as backup. He wouldn't really agree with anything that wasn't at least like £250 per week. I was willing to pay him like 100 120 tops, so away he went. Paul Cox didn't play much. He's rated as being okay. Um, but I managed to get some better options in, which I'll show you. So away he went. And look, he's been paid £700 per week by the Jupiters. I wasn't willing to even get close to that to keep him. Uh, Jason Taylor was that kind of backup right winger. He wasn't special, but he didn't really have much potential. If we played him, we would just be limiting someone else's development. So away he went. He didn't want much. It's just he was his dead weight. At least he wasn't greedy like the rest of them. So yeah, if you look at our transfers, so Charpentier has gone on the outside. We managed to bring in Julian Lenzini, reasonably well rated, right winger, essentially comes in to replace um, Taylor as kind of backup on the right, because we'll have uh, Minan on the right, and we'll have um, Logan Frey on the right as well. He's got some good traits. He runs down the right, gets forward, plays short, simple passes, not the ball pass the opponent. He's, he's a winger. He's very much that kind of winger error. This next player, Feliz Falapapalangi. That's right, Feliz Falapapalangi. Um, isn't very good. I'm not going to lie. I bought him because of his name. I just want to say uh, Falapapalangi as much as possible. He's not going to play a single game for us. I've, I've no doubt about that. He is a complete I was going to say vanity signing, but it's not quite vanity, is it? It's just a stupidity signing. There's, he has no place in the team. He is complete and utter backup. He is rated, actually, as being quite high in potential. Um, his attributes don't seem to bear that out, but we'll, we've got him. We'll keep him. We're actually doing quite well for keepers, so he probably won't get a look in. But uh, Fala Papalangi is a good name to say. I feel like I've said it so many times, I might have summoned him by accident. Another good name, Diego Kaiser. Um, I can't remember where we got him, where he was from. Uh, he was from uh, Moria, Papite, and then Moria. So he's stayed at some good good clubs. He's sort of covering the centre of midfield because Mernier is gone, so a bit lighter there. He tries to kill the balls, he does one twos, he tries to pass rather than score. All things I'm quite happy about. His attributes don't look amazing, but he's got good passing, good determination, decisions, flair. Physically, he's all right, and he's six foot four, so he's another giant to add to the team. And importantly, he's cheap; one hundred and ninety pounds per week is affordable for us. Then we've got Manuel Kalai, Tula Merton, six international goals and fifteen caps. He's already worth about twenty four grand for us. He we paid a little bit extra for him. Good finishing, good anticip uh, anticipation, aggression, bravery, um, reasonable physical stats. He runs with the ball, shoots with power. He should be pretty good. He's from Huaheen Islanders. We picked him up for nothing because they were... Uh, not Huaheen. Yeah, Huaheen. He was on loan at Bora Bora. So he's got premiership goals. He's got a reasonable amount of premiership goals. Um, I'm sure he could do it in the championship as well when he was at the Takaro Terrors. He should be good competition. He's actually a decent backup with a, you know being at a proper team like us instead of Bora Bora or Huaheen. Um, should actually do quite well when we give him a chance. We've got Michael Twig from the Humpbacks. So we he came through our youth intake when we were at the Humpbacks. Um, he's rated as being particularly high potential and he is that good kind of right back cover uh, that we need. So this is Paul Cox has gone. Twig has come in. £220 is a bargain. He's got a reasonable amount of experience. Just not full seasons particularly. 
and he's also flexible. He can play on the left, so we've got options. Another option on the right is Robert uh, Marama. Um, Gambier, 33 caps, so he's got a bit of international experience. He looks okay. He brings the ball out of defence, which I'm not a massive fan of. I'm actually see if I can get rid of that uh, trait from him, because traits do have a big effect on how your team actually can play or how your tactic can assess up. Um, but again, he's a good, good option. Uh, he's no nonsense, which is generally what we like to see. Uh, we've got Nicholas uh, Inai, or Inai, or in, Inal. Never tell with that one. I think that's Inal. Uh, on the left, he was recommended at the time as being quite good, and then he came to us, and he's not very good. This is where we maybe made a bit of a misstep. Um, he's got some good traits. His attributes are fantastic. I'm sure he'll actually be good if we give him a chance. I'm sure he'll perform quite well. He did play for Moria. He's got you know good Premiership experience. He's played in a good team, so he's he's good in that sense. He's got the international experience. He's just not amazing. He's not going to be first choice. Paul Manuel or Manuel is going to be first choice. And then we've also got on the left Joris Renard. So we paid two hundred fifty pounds to get him from. Um, San Pedro, uh, San Pedro, Murtani San Pedro. He looks really good for a 17 year old. He's already got three international caps. We're only paying £55 a week. Um, I think I've got him on like a two or three year youth contract, about like that. And then you've got, oh no, oh, like a pre contract. And we've got an optional one year extension on there too. And he's fairly professional. Just plays left foot, no player traits um, as yet. But he's really highly rated, and again, he's a bit of a giant, which you know I quite like. This makes it look like we're actually overloaded if we look at the club. Well, first of all, it makes our team look quite big, which it is. Um, but actually, now we've got some depth across the club. We we gave another contract to Fred Sabua as well, so we've got another centre back uh, there to rely on if we need to. We look particularly overloaded on the left, so uh, that Joris Renard is actually in the under 23s currently. Uh, so he's not even on this uh, screen. So we've got um, Inai, Manuel, Bauman, and then Renard. But Bauman's going to go. His rate has been quite good, but we've got one point five thousand pound. Uh, one point, yeah, one point five thousand pound bid in. We can get rid of him, and then if we consider it the kind of exchange we've got going on, we're paying Renard fifty five pounds per week, paying him one hundred ninety. It's okay. We can get rid of him, and he did come in. He did do all right. He was. Always a decent kind of rotation player or backup player, um, edging onto the first team. So it's a bit sad in that sense that we're getting rid of him, but I don't think we'll suffer for getting rid of him. Um, and so I imagine he's going to be going to is it Mount who made the bid, I think. Yep, so he's off uh, to Mount Not much else has happened. We've had a few bids come in, so a few people tried to buy Logan Frey, Motu One in particular. Um, a few people coming from Muller from time to time, but nothing's materialised there. I wouldn't get rid of Muller anyway. There was a bid in for Manuel, I think, was uh, Maria were on there as well originally, but I want to sell him. And obviously lots of bids are coming for Luckman. Uh, Chitty, everyone wants a piece of the Chitty Bang. Um, some of the bids were pretty insulting. They were like £2,000. Um, and I know there's actually more money than that floating around. And I will show you how I know this. Um, if we go to the transfer window, in this window we've had a total of 230,000 um, spend go on. So that's how much money is being spent. 2% foreign import, which I didn't even realise you could see this. A bit interesting. Um, I don't know if it's counting foreign as being like people from different islands or if it's just from outside of French, sort of Polynesia. Uh, the average transfer is about two and a half thousand pounds. Net transfer spend three point five. So there's a lot of selling within going on. You can see some of this. Uh, um, Rotu sold Ibel Pinau to Huahin for forty four. Um, Huahin Island spent seventy eight buying Nicholas Bailey. It's actually quite good. Um, also offloaded for fifty four thousand Cornetti. To Moria, as you can see, there's money starting to spread around a bit. Ace Chance bought Andy Sova um, for 11,000. 
Uh, Moria did some involved in those kind of deals with Huahe and some swaps going on there. Taha brought in Alex O'Brien for a few thousand. Um, we brought we spent two hundred fifty pounds, hundred fifty there. Some sales here as well that we've seen elsewhere. Oscar Dumas going off, but we can see overall some of these teams are starting to spend. Um, so Huahe, Chance, Moria, uh, Taha. Uh, Man U have been putting in offers for players that haven't been that successful. Uh, Huntbacks have also been uh, putting in offers that haven't been successful, but they're willing to spend. I imagine there'll be a bit more uh, going on um, as well, because these are just the biggest signings and biggest sales. So if we actually look at the um, that managing movements, this one here, let's go by fee. So you can see um, Rotu I sold two players there. beauvalet has gone as well, so they've made about seventy grand. So Huahin had actually spent about one hundred and forty, but then recouped about fifty of that as well. So you can see there's more going on. It's much much different from previous season. I did not know that had happened, or maybe I did. I can remember. So yeah, okay, not as big as last season, but you can see. You'd have to go far back to see basically nothing going on. And then suddenly you get this explosion the last season or two. That's good. That's good news. So we're going to play the match against Mountie now, and then we'll end the video because I've been rambling on for a little bit too long. It looks like we'll be in the away kit, so we'll get to see the 3D kit in action until after this match. We've got 10 players away on international GT because it's the Atoll Championship. Manuel's managed to score his first international goal. Right, so Ahmed Smith. Oh, he's international GT. We really missed that. Uh, so Pujol will start. On the right-hand side, Bon is available, so we'll get Bon in. On the left-hand side, Lamb and Twig are away, so Thomas will start. And then in the middle here, I don't really rate Fred Sabir as being that good. I'm going to go for the standard of Muller and Maggie. I'm actually a bit sad that Maggie didn't get that international call-up. So I'm glad he's here playing for us, but he's missed out internationally. Uh, on the right, Logan Frey is going to make the start. On the left, um, right on the left, let's... Oh, he's on international duty as well. Let's bring him up anyway so he knows there. You can see I've got some backup keepers here as well, so I'm, I'm alright keeper-wise. So on the left, it's going to be Bauman for his um, last match. We might have to delay that transfer just so we've got him for the rest of the um, international window. When it comes to the actual centre midfield, going to play Diego Kaiser and Jean-Baptiste Moreau. Jean-Baptiste is underrated when you look at his attributes, but... That's a fantastic record for us on a season. Not bad for a backup. Then up front, who have we got? So we've got Kalai available, we've got Chidi available, and we have Wallace um, available as well as Chabert and who if we needed to. So let's have Chidi and Kalau, and then we'll just fill in the rest of the bench. With whoever we've got left, so Sabua, Lenzi, Dewitt, Stroud, Wallace, uh, Chabert, and I'm going to go grab Keeper. I'm going to bring on Fala Papalangi. I'm not going to bring him on, he's just going to sit on the bench. Right, let's go. Auto number. Clyde can have the 11. No one else wants it. He can have it. I often wonder if not giving a player their favoured number makes any real difference. I don't think it does. Maybe we are in our... Uh, no, I don't think we are in our... Boy, our home kit. It'll look quite right. So we're going for 442, obviously. Um, they've got a range of players who I don't really recognise. Oh, Grove, I do, I think. Yeah, Tim Grove. He's a striker that they're playing in the centre of midfield. Because three strikes up front's not enough. You could have one hidden here. Uh, but he's getting on a little bit. Who's this Lutu guy? 
Yeah. I say that, he's going to score right away, isn't he? Okay, various for a reason. So they're newly promoted. Um, what's it? Shake it. Oh, I've not changed my shirt. Once I finish recording this video, I'll go and do that. Yeah, we're in the green. So, no oh, uh, kit for us. I've not done like the 3D away kits or anything like that. I'm not, you know, I've not just not got that kind of time. And I only did the home one as a kind of tester to see if I could, and it's worked out all right. So, they're newly promoted. Let's see what we can do. Bowman in. Go. Maybe I should charge. Ooh, this is a little bit dodgy, isn't it? So, the offer for Bowman is from Mount T. And he's just made their keeper look a fool there. I guess technically, like the gentleman's agreement would be not to play him until the against Mount until the transfer has gone through. But you know, needs must. And I forgot to. Right, Frey nods that on. Chidi goes on the inside, put him through. Kalai, first goal, nicely. Since that move was quite good, we just seemed to cut around a lot of the players. Once Frey got that movement going. So yeah. Shitty kind of goes past him. And that was really bad defending from Mounty. I, I know we've not really seen enough of them to be able to predict what's going to go on. But the past. Well I say the past. Since the start of the game. Like the start of the database. The save. Oh Shitty at the back post. Easy. It's a good ball in by Bauman. Does Bauman want to stay? Because whatever Bauman can do, Renard can do as well. I'm sure of it. We've got enough depth. But he is... Given his all against the team that are about to buy him, he's going to have a really awkward first training session, isn't he? Yeah, Map T traditionally have gone up and down. They are a complete yo-yo team. And it's... In one sense, it's, oh no, what was that? Bauman's doing it all, all action, so he's going to get sent off as well. He's decided he's going to limit the damage he's done. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, he didn't want to do too much damage to the team he was going to, so he's, he's scored, assisted, and now he's um, going to rest. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's bring on Wallace for... Shitty. Because at least Wallace has got kind of the ability to play on the left. Normally a bit further up, but he can do. Clyde, get there. We'll see how this goes. We might get back into it. Ray getting out. Ray's doing his defensive duties today, alright. Clyde. Clyde seems quite good on the ball. Oh, good pass in. That was such a good move. Oh, well, we're down to 10 men as well. Kaiser popping in. The king. Clyde looked like he was shaping it for a shot and just put him through. I think we're all right. 20 minutes in. What kind of highlights? Key? Yeah. Just checking out. I hadn't put them on. Um, Extended or comprehensive or whatever. Yeah, some empty go up and down. In one sense, it's good because they're almost certain to go down this season or be in the fight, which means if you're another team, that gives you a bit of a cushion. There's only really like one relegation spot to worry about if Mount are around. Um, but it's frustrating because they get to the championship and then manage to do quite well. Kalai. Oh, I tried the follow up. Go on, Frey. So they, they want another goal. They're not stopping. Oh, they're through. Pujol managed to kind of like slap it away. Yes, yeah, so Mapti then come up from a championship, and by doing that, they stop like another team from another island or another team that's not been in the Premiership from coming up. See, Kind of makes the promotion relegation bit a little bit stale. So I think Mapti have come up, and the other team that came up um, were also another team that had been relegated in the past. 
it's not like he was a fresh fresh face he's Mayo who also came up and they, again they were quite often relegation fodder it's not the first time they've done the kind of up and down dance gone Wallace yeah Mount T are trash like I know where our tactics quite good and I know we've strengthened the team and we had a good season but we're a man down and we've scored two goals from being at that point of a man down comfortably Almost another. Um, in the kind of postseason sort of awards and stuff, we didn't win Manager of the Year. Um, we weren't even in the top three. Uh, the Moti One Manager won it, I think, which is a bit weird because he didn't really do much other than just keep him up. So I think that's quite enough. Um, considering Moti One, I don't think have actually ever been relegated, so it's not like. They were relegation favourites and he kept them up. Good clearance. Uh, and then the kind of like player for next season and top goal scorer or young player for next season were kind of predicted. And none of our players are in there, which is a little bit harsh. And then we had the kind of title predictions and we were predicted to come in about fifth or sixth. So we're not expected to actually win the title, but we're not expected to struggle. And the board are kind of with that as well. They're expecting, I think, mid-table. Expecting us to win the uh, Mutineer Trophy. Um, expecting, you know, a couple of rounds into the Inter-Island Cup. So we're predicted to do all right, really. Thomas going to Wallace. There we go. Oh, he's offside. He's there. He's a bit of a poacher, though, isn't he? Sniffing around. Also, did some general off season checking from players. So, Andre and Pons are still playing aboard. Aboard. Abroad. Not on a boat or anything. They're playing abroad. Boss Calgal stopped him. Yeah, they're still playing abroad, although Pons' contract's running out. I did try and sign him, but he has no interest. Um, so if you've if you not watched those older videos, Pons is a, a Kalai. Should really have his hat trick by now. Be something good debut. Scored as many goals with ten men as we have with eleven now. Well, Kaiser always had that as well. Feel a bit bad for uh, Kaiser. Yeah, so Pons was a right winger who was amazing when we were at Humpbacks and then went to play in Saudi Arabia. It's now worth quite a bit of money. Uh, Ilan Andre was a sort of attacking midfielder who was probably the best player attribute-wise we've had in the league. There are a few now that are getting close to him, actually, in other teams, not in ours, but in other teams. Um, but he, again, he went abroad as well, I think, probably to Saudi Arabia or Qatar. Uh, so they're still abroad doing that. Yanin, one of our best strikers ever when we're in the Humpbacks, is still signed up to Taha, I think it is. And Gerard is still at Moria. They've got a reasonable goal tally for them. Not quite Humpback standards, but not bad. Gone Wallace. Everyone's offside, so, you know, almost, almost managed it. I should probably make some subs. Um... Let's bring on Lenzini on the right. Let's give Kaiser a rest and bring on Huit. Then it doesn't really matter who I bring on for some of these. Let's bring on Sabua or Muller. Oh, that's too many subs. I've already made one, of course. I think our kind of moves and passing is a lot more fluid at the start of this season than it was last. Oh, come on. What a soft goal. Johan Boscali. Oh, Boscal? Is that two L's or an I? Uh, not bad. I mean, it was bad goalkeeping by Pujol. He should have held that or managed to actually deflect it out. But no clean sheet for him. One hand... Not surprised because he's not that good a keeper. 
compared to uh, Smith. Um, but at the same time, they've not really threatened that much. So it's a bit, a bit irritating to give that goal away. But, you know, we'll we'll accept a 6-1. We'll live with that. <laughs> It'll be okay. Thomas, Wallace, still time? No, nah, not, not time for another goal. So there we go, 6-1. Shot wise, 25 to their 12. It's not like it's complete domination, but then we also did have a player sent off. Doesn't really help us when it comes to the international um, the window. So we're top just by virtue of that being the opening match of the season for, for the Premiership. Goal difference of five. That'll soon change. Schedule wise, um, when we come back for the Bora Bora and Taha um, matches because they're quite big teams with some good players in. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. As always, if you've liked it, please like or subscribe or comment. Let me know what you think, if there's anything you want to look at in particular detail. Um, you can also read stuff that I've been writing um, on dictatethegame.com. Got a, a nice, shiny new website, so you can go have a look at that. Um, there's a really good article there the past couple of weeks by FM Vars, um, or Guy, who does the Moneyball series, and he's got one where he's... Um, He's put a spreadsheet up basically that shows you how he kind of rates players in his team to work out who needs moving on, uh, who can be retrained, for example, to sort of give you utility elsewhere. It's a really nice kind of tidy spreadsheet you can download that's really helpful. Um, I've not used it for this particular game, particular save, just because I don't have a huge amount of transfer options kind of available um, to me. If I was still at the humpbacks, then it'd work because I have options and I could actually replace as and when I wanted to, but I can't really at the moment. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.